Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today in Toronto, Canada at Movie Armaments Group, taking a look at their SETME Modelo A rifle. This is, well, it is a Spanish service rifle that uh, came before the SETME Modelos B and C, kind of makes sense there, uh, which were the standard issue Spanish Army rifles for several decades, and perhaps historically of more importance, this is a developmental uh, iteration towards the HKG3 rifle, which became adopted by a whole mess of people. So this was designed by a group of German ex-Mauser engineers. After, well, during World War II, Mauser had kind of unintentionally discovered and then developed the uh, roller-delayed blowback mechanism. And they put it in together as the, the Sturmgewehr 45, which was only getting, basically only getting through prototype stage when World War II ended. Um, a, a handful of parts kits for these guns were captured by the Allies, they were studied fairly intensively. And the engineers who were familiar with the system, right after the war, ended up working in France. They were then uh, basically recruited uh, by the Spanish government to help develop a new rifle for the Spanish military. And that's where we start approaching this guy. So the team was led by an engineer by the name of Ludwig Vorgrimmler, and in 1950 he put together what was called the Modelo II. Um, the Spanish actually had two different, <laughs> two different groups of Germans, in fact, uh, designing potential rifles for them, and they ended up with the Modelo 1 and the Modelo 2. And in, between 1950 and 52, these two rifles competed against each other. Uh, the Modelo 2 would eventually develop into this one. In 1952 it was chosen over the Model 1. And at that point uh, the Spanish military competition, well, really stops being a competition and it turns into a development program to turn the Model 1, or the Model 2, into a rifle that's suitable for the, the army at large. Now one of the problems that they had encountered at the very beginning is that this roller delayed blowback system had been developed around the 8mm Kurtz cartridge, which is obviously an intermediate cartridge, very similar to 7.62x39. What, and, and what the Spanish wanted was this really quite interesting and unique cartridge that ended up being the 792x41mm SETME cartridge. I actually have an entire separate video on that cartridge itself. And so rather than delve into it here, I will suggest that you check out that video if you haven't before. Uh, that'll be linked at the end of this one. Uh, that's what the Modelo 2 was designed around. By the time they got to this guy, however, we're getting into the mid-1950s, and now NATO is becoming a thing. Uh, the 7.62 NATO cartridge was standardized in early 1954, and the Spanish are really looking at this with a fair amount of interest. Like They kind of want to want to standardize with NATO, but it might be difficult. This rifle really isn't designed for it. That's The NATO cartridge is much more powerful than the 792 set me round. So they develop an intermediate, and the intermediate rifle is, or cartridge is coupled with this rifle, which is really starting to look like a G3, or a, a set me that we're familiar with today. So the problem they had is if you chambered this rifle for 7.62 NATO, it would work, but it didn't delay the bolt long enough. Like the bolt would open under very high pressure, the bolt velocity would be way too high, you'd get a couple hundred rounds through the gun, and then it would basically batter itself to death. You'd crack receivers, crack parts, rollers. And so their first attempt to fix this problem was actually just to download the ammunition. Standard 7.62 NATO is was a you know the, the round they were working with was a 144 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second. That's 9.3 grams at like 850 feet, uh, meters per second. In order to accommodate this rifle, they downloaded that cartridge to a 107 grain bullet, 7.3 grams, at just 2,500 feet per second, 760 meters per, sec uh, meters per second. And with that lighter cartridge, this worked okay. And so they actually went ahead and built a substantial number of these. I believe the Setme Modelo B also used that cartridge, but that gave them other problems. Like they weren't NATO standard for one thing, and they were using uh, 7.62 NATO machine guns, and the light ammo wouldn't work properly in the machine guns, so they're ending up with two separate cartridges that look the same, but can only, you know, they can't be interchanged in the, the rifles and machine guns. So this would ultimately lead to the adoption of the Setme Model C, in 7.62 NATO solve all the problems. Anyway, that's the whole story. What we want to look at today is specifically the Model A. So it has a number of features that are substantially different from uh, the later patterns, including most interestingly the fact that it fires from an open bolt in full auto. So let's take a look at that. 
There are not a whole lot of markings on this thing. On the left side of the receiver we have Fusil Automatico SEMI. SEMI, by the way, stands for uh, Centro de Estudios Técnicos de Materiales Especiales. So the Center for Technical Studies of Special Materials, which is some you know, big long fancy way of saying gun development. <laughs> uh, serial number here is A, which indicates the Modelo A, and uh, 4197. They made several thousand of these. There is in fact a particularly interesting story about these uh, relating to French marine commandos who ended up using them in North Africa. And if you want to see that whole story, uh, I actually have a blog post about it. So I'll post a link to that in the video description. You should check it out if you're curious about some real-world use of the Modelo A. We have a three-position fire selector. We'll flip it over to this side where you can see the actual lever. Uh, T is tiro, which is shoot, that's semi-auto. S is the safe position, and R is uh, rapido, probably, or repetition, um, full auto. So semi-safe, full. And well, let's let's we'll come back to this in just a moment. Unlike the later patterns of SEMI, the Modelo A has a tangent leaf rear sight. I apologize that it's a really grimy tangent rear leaf sight, but uh, that goes from 200 meters out to 1,000 meters. This would of course be replaced on the later patterns with the, uh, the, the rotating aperture type sight that we're used to on SEMIs. The front sight is just a basic hooded post. The muzzle device is a combination, it's a brake, and it's also set up uh, for rifle grenades. Like everything military at this period was designed for rifle grenades. There really is no handguard on here. Instead you just have bipod legs. And in this way it's kind of like several of the patterns of heavy barreled FAL, where when you fold the bipod up, presto, there's your handguard. Um, be careful not to grip it weirdly and accidentally touch the barrel and burn the crap out of yourself. Uh, and then these snap down. So there's a little spring clip here that snaps over the barrel to lock the bipod legs in place. When you fold these down, you can pivot the gun back and forth. You can't push into the bipod because it will collapse, but you can pull back against the bipod because it does uh, lock up here in this position. There is also a folding carry handle, which a lot of people don't like, but was also, again, popular on a lot of rifles of this period. The buttstock I find rather interesting. It actually has a rubber pad on it. It has a sling cutout that is perfectly World War II German in, in nature. And then the, the shape of this buttstock is actually different a bit than the later Setmes and G3s. It's a little bit shorter, has a little more pronounced of a hump here, and it is very reminiscent of the Sturmgewehr. Unfortunately I don't have a magazine for this rifle, but it would have been uh, the steel Setme pattern with a, a gentle continuous curve. Uh, it, this, the Setme Modelo A used the same magazine as the B and the C, so it's the magazine you're used to seeing. The release on this is a button only. Uh, they had not yet developed the paddle magazine that people are more used to seeing on the HK. Now disassembly is going to work just the same way as HK rifles. We're going to push out the two pins at the back and pop those guys out. Note that there are no holes in the buttstock uh, to hold those pins in. We can then pull the rear end off of the gun, and I forgot to unclip the sling. Take the sling off of its hook there. Now I can pull the buttstock off along with its very long recoil spring. There's that, and its very long recoil spring. The grip assembly now pivots down. There's a third pin here that I can take out to remove the entire grip assembly. Alright, that pin out. We can take off the grip assembly, and then we can take out the bolt. The charging handle on the Modelo A is a bit different in style than the later HKs and SEPMIs. It does work the same way when you open the handle like this. That uh, gives you the extra leverage to cam open and unlock the bolt, and then it just cycles backwards. We can drop the bolt out the back now. Note that there is a little ball detent there, and that charging handle snaps into place on it. Now we can pull out our bolt and carrier out the back, and then we have our bare receiver barrel and bipod assembly. 
The bolt carrier here is very similar to a standard HK91. Uh, the details of these changed, the exact dimensions changed, but the concept did not. So there's your anti-bounce lever. The one thing that's really different here is that there is a sear engagement surface right there. And if we take a look at the fire control group, we will see this big old piece that has no position being in an HK fire control group. So uh, if I'm in semi-auto mode, this thing has no purpose. In fact, it's in semi-auto mode, it's pulled down out of the way. This is actually the full auto sear. So in semi-auto, this is dropped down so it doesn't catch on the bolt carrier. Instead, you have just the hammer. When you pull the trigger, hammer goes forward, etc. Reset it, bolt goes forward, trips the disconnector, and you're ready to fire again. In safe, the sear comes up, so it will lock the bolt in the rearward position if it's back there, uh, and trigger's locked. Does nothing. Then the neat one is in full auto, if I pull the trigger, it's going to do two things. It's going to release the hammer right there, and it's also dropping this sear down. So uh, if I hold the bolt, or hold the trigger down in full auto, uh, this releases. So this doesn't hold on to the bolt. Uh, the hammer gets recocked, bolt comes back, bolt goes forward, bolt trips the disconnector here by riding over it. Ow, that's a little rough on the fingers and the hammer immediately drops again, until such time as I release the trigger, when this comes up, and it's going to catch the bolt in the rearward position by locking against this surface right here. So you can see this in operation. I have the rifle set to semi-auto. Racket. Fire. Racket. Fire. Closed bolt, of course. In safe. I got nothing. And then when I go to the full auto position, when I rack it, it actually locks in the open position. When I fire, bolt slams home. If I hold the trigger here and use the charging hand to cycle the gun, it will continue to cycle until I release the trigger, and then it locks open once more. That prevents any possibility of a cook-off, because you don't have a round sitting in the chamber in potentially a very hot barrel after you've been firing full auto. Uh, and it theoretically enhances the cooling capability of the gun by allowing air to flow through the barrel. So that is a really neat feature, and that would be dropped on later patterns of the set made. They decided to simplify it and just go with a closed bolt all closed bolt all the time design. So there you have the uh, the elusive Setme Modelo A completely field stripped. I probably don't need to tell you this, but uh, Setme Modelo A rifles are really quite scarce today, especially in the United States, since they're all machine guns. Um, there are some, some rebuilds around. There are a few of these trickled through here and there, but they're really quite difficult to find. So it's really cool that Movie Armaments Group happens to have this one, and they let me get my grubby hands on it and tear it apart and show it to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. A big thanks to MAG for the opportunity, and uh, thanks for watching.